Welcome to another great season of the Homegrown Hunter TV. On today's episode, we're gonna join Logan in the tree stand hunting his first black bear. Logan is certainly not new to bear hunting. He's been bear baiting with me since he was three years old. Joining him in the stand today is Tyrell Gawiler. He's gonna try and lay down some footage to make this happen. The nice thing about this stand is it's a neighbor's property not far from the Rackstacker farm, making it super easy for us to get in and out of on a daily basis after school. Tyrell was just gonna go through a couple of tips on what to look for in shop placement if a bear does come in today. Logan is gonna be shooting his mother's 50 caliber muzzleloader topped with a 250 grain Hornady Sabbat slug shooting white hots as the gunpowder. Contains black bear munchies, bear slop, and IDG. You'll probably look at the camera and be like, Welcome to another great season of the Homegrown Hunter. Nice shot. Homegrown Hunter TV is brought to you by Rackstacker, Canada's leader in big game attractants. Campbellford Chrysler, a small town dealer with a huge inventory. Huckabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. Bishop Lake Outdoors, First Place Trailers, Kent Cartridge Canada, Nature of Design Signs and Graphics, and these other fine sponsors. It's been kind of chilly. That's why we're out here tonight. It's sprinkled on us quite a bit. As it turns out, there was a bear approaching from the back of the bait. Because bears approach the bait and they're coming here for a reason, there's no reason to rush the shot. Bears are gonna be curious, they're gonna walk around. If you're spraying different products or using different baits, they're gonna be curious to see what's new every time they come in. It's important to be patient because bears will be moving around so much it gives you an opportunity to shoot multiple times. There's no reason to rush. He's, I, I believe, he's the smallest one. 
Closed captioning has been brought to you by the original portable winch. Compact, lightweight, and can be carried anywhere. And now, this week's Cut to the Chase segment, brought to you by Rackstacker. It's going to take a couple of minutes here and explain our bear setup. A couple of years ago, we had a neighbor up the road from the Rackstacker farm call and ask us to get rid of some bears for him. To the north of here is solid bush and swamp. We had a site set up about 120 yards to the west of here. And it wasn't very active. I mean, we knew the bears were there, but they would not come out during daylight as we sat there. So we moved this site over to here, and as you can see, it's open hardwoods. And right behind the camera here is all a transition zone of cedar. So what was happening is the wind gets in here and swirls and the bear was smelling us. So we moved the bait over to this corner so that the wind would cast our scent from the, the stand to the south. And then that way we can enter without getting busted. And it's worked out really well. Normally how I set my bear sights up, depending on if you're shooting archery or a uh, rifle, this is an archery setup. You can put a crib. Bears don't like to climb on the branches, so they reach inside, opening up their vital for a shot. Another thing you can do is I set up a roller barrel. The roller barrel's got small holes in it. You can put two or three bags of black bear munchies in here, and as the bears roll it around, they slowly eat the little tantalizing morsels that are inside there very sweet and keeps them coming back and it doesn't fill them up and they're gone for two days they come back regularly to keep feeding on it plus it's fun for them too right set yourself up a trail camera make sure you get yourself some attention getter or it takes guts spray it up into the trees when you first set it up or every week when you come to reset it and that'll keep the bears coming let's follow Logan and see how this hunt unfolds get yours today at rackstacker.ca This young bear is working the site absolutely perfect. Tyrell and Logan are holding out for a larger bear that they've had on trail camera. There was three different bears coming into this site and this is the smaller of the three. Gives them something to watch for sure. However, waiting until dark would be best option to shoot a larger bear. A little aiming practice on a live animal never hurts. It's good to have them in the scope. It's the following evening of Logan's black bear hunt. This time, I'm behind the camera filming Logan's hunt. I had talked him into shooting the first bear that came only because of a short time in the spring. It wasn't very long before that bear started to show up again. This is the bear that Tyrell and him had seen the day before, but Logan had decided that he wanted to shoot this bear if it gave him an opportunity. So I told him to be patient, focus on the target, 
and take his time. That bear was not going to be going anywhere for some time. The larger bear was there the night before, but because we didn't get any daytime images of him, we decided to take the first bear that we had seen that night. If you choose to bait bears and you see some activity like this, it's important to know that he's there for a reason. He's there going to feed, there's no reason to rush the shot. It's always important to make sure you take your time, especially if you get worked up. Being that this is Logan's first bear, I told him to take his time, wait for a broadside shot to present itself, and make sure he breathes before squeezing that trigger off, just to make sure that we make a good clean shot. There's no reason to rush. One last thing I want to let you know is that I forgot to turn the sound on the microphone. I apologize, but when you see the shot, there'll be no sound. Kapow! Way to go, Logan. <laughs> I'm confident that Logan's shot was fantastic. However, I got down to double check the site location because the bear did crawl off. Giving him a thumbs up, tell him to put his orange back on, and we're going to go start looking for his bear. Tracking a bear can sometimes be tough because with their long hair it can absorb a lot of blood. But from this scene here, you can see that the shot was well placed through the lungs and there is a great blood trail to follow. We reloaded his muzzle loader at the stand to ensure that we had some backup just in case it was still a go. Logan's a happy kid now that he's able to punch his first bear tag. This week's tech tip is brought to you by Banks Outdoors, distributed in Canada by Rackstacker. I'd like to show you a tool that I've been using for the last 10 years to drag out my bears. If you've ever harvested a black bear, you know that when you get up to him, he's gonna be like jelly. It's like carrying a big bag of jello. It's very tough to get out. They're hard to get a handle on. So this one here, I don't know what this is called, but I bought it from a fellow in the United States. And all it is is a cable that you can put the, the feet of the bear into, and then you can just cinch this over tight. And as you start to pull on this, it pulls tight against the back legs and makes it very easy to pull. This is about 24 inches long. It's made of aluminum and a piece of cable. It sometimes hurts the hands, so rope would work the same way. Um, if you're gonna use wood, I would suggest using a, like an oak or a maple just to make sure that the wood doesn't break, but metal works really well. And then your hands go like this and it cinches that tight. It makes it very easy to pull out. Logan's gonna demonstrate how to do that right now. And they're fairly easy to make at home. So if that gives you some ideas on how to get your bear out, I hope that helps. Let's get back to the hunt. With the intent to shoot much larger bears in the future, we weren't going to shoulder mount this bear for Logan. He did decide to do something with it, however, in order to do that, we have to do what's called case skinning. 
We're going to get into some details on how to get this done. It's also great practice for Logan to be using a knife. This is the sort of stuff they don't teach you in school. Now that we got Logan's bear back to the farm, we got to prepare it for the taxidermist. Logan wants to turn it into a blanket for his bed. We're going to soft tan that, and in order to do that, we have to case skin it through the back legs, up through the belly, to the bottom of the neck, and then out to the palms. Removing the paws is important. However, we are going to show some graphics here, so just be forewarned. It'll take a few minutes, and we'll go through those steps. No. Should I have? No idea. Very quiet in the bush and nothing these guys anyways. In order to turn this bear into a blanket for Logan's bed, we need to do what's called case skinning. Case skinning is going from the belly all the way to the base of the neck and up to the legs so that you can get a nice big square rug. This can be then soft hand through your local taxidermist so that you can use it as a blanket on the back of your couch, your lazy boy, or even your bed. It's fantastic for the winter time to keep you warm. This is a bit of a process, but you want to do two things here. One, make sure that you don't cut through the hide. You want to have a nice sharp knife. And you also don't want to cut into too much of the meat, because of course we're going to consume that. Once you get to the joints, it's important to follow up on the joint, cut the tendons to release that joint. I normally don't cut the paws. I usually leave that work for the taxidermist so that he can do it properly. I'm not that experienced with it. But cutting through the joints, cut the tendons, Spin the leg back to free it from the hide. Okay, hold that up. Depending on the size of the animal, this could be time consuming. But it is important to have two people on hand. It's nice to have somebody there to pull back on the hide to make it easier for the person that's skinning. By grabbing the hide and pulling towards you, it'll release the skin from the meat itself, making it much easier for that knife to cut through. When it comes to freezing your hide and everything's all done, what we like to do is fold the hide skin on skin with the head on top when you put it into the freezer. You do not want to wrap the head up because this can create a hot spot and all the hairs will start to loosen up. To protect the hide, you want to make sure that you get it into the freezer as quick as possible. Yeah, he's nice and cool though. Yeah. Yep.
Okay. Using a well-rounded blade is really nice when it comes to skinning. You can roll your wrist and slightly cut off that hide without cutting too deep. A pointier blade is tougher on the hide and could potentially poke it through. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and learned a few things along the way. If you find it's useful information, by all means reach out to us at hghtv.ca. We want to bring some information and educational tools that are going to help you in the field. I'm your host, Steve Elmy. Thanks for joining us. Until next time. For past episodes, be sure to check out hghtv.ca. Until next time.